Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Teaching Me. This is Abdul Ghaffur. I hope you are doing well. Today, Lesson 64, Pedagogy, uh, TLS Test. My previous lesson was about the national uh, program of tolerance. And I have mentioned that I'll be uploading another video about the uh, global citizenship education. Uh, this is also called the GCED. So in this le lesson, what I'm going to share with you, so here are some content table. You have to stay with me. If you didn't subscribe the uh, teaching and learning, it's a humble request to subscribe. For more videos, press the bell icon button. Another thing uh, I must mention, that if you want to help others, if you have any resources for a cycle three, pedagogy cycle three teachers, I'll be thankful. My WhatsApp and the email is in the description. So please kindly share that I can share with the other teachers as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to leave uh, you alone. I'm trying my best to give you uh, as much as I can. So let's see what I'm going to share with you in this. So in this lesson, I'm going to uh, explain uh, about the global citizenship. And uh, it's about the standard one first, the performance criteria and uh, the areas of that performance criteria or the indicators of the performance criteria. What is personal ethics and professional ethics? Difference between them. Example of both personal ethics and the professional ethics. I'll be defining and explaining the uh, global citizenship education. Dimension of global citizenship education. Demands of uh, uh, core conceptual uh, dimensions. Aims of global citizenship education. Pedagogical guidance of the global citizenship education. Key learning outcomes of GCED. Uh, topic areas of the GCED and the topics and the ages of areas of that defined by the GCED. So you have to stay with me for this in order to understand what is global citizenship. But before that, uh, I'm going to share you the information about the performance criteria standards so you can check in the study guide too. So let's talk about the First, personal ethics and professional ethics. I'm going to share uh, with you the screen. Here. So standard one, uh, professional ethical uh, conducts demonstrate personal and professional ethics, which can be measured by the following performance criteria. So these two components of the uh, professional ethics will be measured by these three domains. First, demonstrate integrity, demonstrate respect and fairness, model a positive work ethics. So let me clear that we are talking about the professional ethics. So these personal ethics and professional ethics, both are the values that an individual use at workplace. Now, the thing is that how are you going to be assessed? You're going to be assessed in three domains of that. Demonstrate, integrate, demonstrate respect and fairness, model and positive work. Another point that these values, now we have the two values. The one which has been set by an individual or means your own values. Another one values set by the organization or state or international benchmark. So these are the two components or the frameworks on uh, the basis we work on our workplaces. So let's see what is the difference between personal ethics and professional ethics. Now, personal ethics are your own principles and values. Now, suppose you know, if I'm working at a certain place, I have a certain habit, certain uh, values that set for my standards. I have set the benchmarks for me. Now, what type of these, you know, the benchmark I have set and what can be, you know, this thing. 
first, you know, it can be a respect. I'm just giving you an example. So the respect, this is my own value, how I have to respect. So for respect, organization cannot set the standards. Okay? That will be the professionally, they set the benchmark, how to deal with your customer and your clients. So this is a one of the examples, stay with me. I'll give you one few more examples. How to behave at workplace when making decisions. So one, the standards that, that organization has set, you have to deal accordingly. But as a human, as a, um, a nature, okay, you have to respond. Now these ways and actions of responding, you know, these are your own values and personal skills that you are complying in your organization in order to satisfy me. Second thing, it's a reflection of personal life through setting of his or her own benchmark. These ethics help to determine right or wrong and also help how to deal with the different situations. Many situations occur at the workplace. Sometimes the customers make sometimes parents nagging and the way you cannot school them. Organizations set the standards, but in this situation, you have to tolerate, you have to deal with it respectively, you have to try to satisfy. These are your personal ethics, but you cannot beyond, go beyond the professional ethics or the benchmark which has been set by the uh, organization or your company. Now, these personal ethics are very from person to person. To what extent and how they have to deal, that's the most important thing, you know. So, your personal ethics are different uh, than mine, or you, your personal ethics, is, skill ethics are different than your brother and sisters. Or even. So, every individual has a different personal ethics, you know, but we cannot say that the professional ethics are different, you know. These are the benchmarks which have been set by the uh, organization. So for all, these are the same. Move to the next. Examples of the personal ethics. As you can see that these are individual own beliefs and values. You know? Now, what are the beliefs and values? Respect, honesty, loyalty, and responsibility. Now, Loyalty and honesty, these are also covering the domain of the professional ethics. But to what extent that matters? You know? Sometimes we give more or we are more favorable. Sometimes we uh, are more sincere, honest. What we, you know, sometimes we are trying to satisfy, you know, personally. So that is uh, in the domain of the personal ethics. However, professionally, you have to respond as the statement you have to respond. But how much you are sincere and honest to satisfied, you have to go beyond the professional ethics for these. These are some examples. Now, I'll be giving you here the difference as well as you know. Now, personal with values within a workplace and follow organizations and the state's values. Now, professional ethics means that you have to follow the codes and rules or code of conduct of the organizations or a state. Example, I'm giving you for both. An example of personal code of ethics is as follow. A person chooses to return the lost item that they found on the ground to lost and found rather than keep it for themselves due to their personal ethics of honesty. In the workplace, an example of professional ethics would be the same person returns a wallet to their co-worker due to the core of the conduct. So see, at the same situation, but the different parameters. Okay? So while out of the office or workplace, you are showing the honesty, and the same time your action, you are, have to follow the core of conduct. So that is the difference between professional and personal ethics. So you have to be very careful how you're gonna face the question, the question, will be based on scenario. So you have to be very careful that what is the scenario of the professional ethics and what can be the scenario for personal ethics. Now, demonstrate integrity. Now, these things has been taken from the core of uh, 
uh, conduct of the state or ministry of education or UAE ministry of education, these statements. So these statements comply or obligatory for both public and private sectors. Now, what are these score of conduct for honesty, fairness, and integrity as have shown the demand and the areas of the performance criteria, how you have to do, they set the codes for conduct that everyone has to follow. Integrity, public servant shall put the interest of government human resources before personal ethics. So what is the priority? Professional ethics are before the personal ethics. Honesty, public uh, servants shall be honest and open and really make an effort to gain the trust of the superiors and subordinates for both. They have to show the honesty for their lower staff and higher uh, their bosses and the managers. Fairness and equality, public servants shall be committed to providing equal opportunity that bring about a safe and stimulating environment to a peak performance for from their subordinates. So fairness should be, there should be no biased decisions. So that biased decisions are gonna lead to corruption and other consequences which may spoil the society. So the fairness is a very significant and important role at the workplace and you have to show the equality for these, you know. So these performance criteria at the professionals are very important and every employee has to follow and work accordingly. Now, guys, our global citizenship, okay? Before going to the core conceptual develop, uh, uh, dimension, I must share that uh, explain to you what it is. You know. The question is that, is it the same citizenship that we are, everybody is rushing to, for second passport, for dual nationality, or there's a difference between them. If that these are the different, then how they are the different? Let's see, first we need to understand what is global citizenship and then who set these benchmark for it. I'm going to share another document which has been uh, shared or there's a link in the study guide too. So let's see uh, where it is here. You can see the screen, this document, and I have just taken the link from the uh, study guide too. So first, the definition of that, according to Benny Kimo, UN uh, Secretary General, he said, education gives us a profound understanding that we are tied together as a citizen of the global community and that our challenges are interconnected. Now, global citizens of education, the challenge for every country are interconnected. However, in the citizenship of the property, in the citizenship of the uh, borders, we have individual uh, the problems. We have isolated problems. We have a solo problems on these challenges and they have to deal uh, professionally and according to their constitution. So one thing is clear that global citizenship education is connected as a global uh, community. However, the citizenship based on property ownership and skill they are solo individual and they have their own core of conducts to deal with them. So this thing is clear that they are completely different. Let's further, the concept of citizenship has evolved over time. Of course, historically, citizenship did not extend to all. For example, only men or property owner were eligible to be citizens. No, of course, this is not the main purpose of the global citizen. Now, uh, let me add, you know, now this are uh, the interconnection and this global citizenship education concept is led by uh, UNESCO or something, United Nations Educational Scientific and Cultural Organization. One that they have to deal the education uh, through, uh, throughout the gl uh, global community. The, another, at uh, the task of that one, to take care of the uh, heritage as well as, you know. So in the UAE, there are some uh, heritage sites which has been authorized by the uh, UNESCO 
and uh, they are called or maintained by the UNESCO organization. So this is the, an international organization and they are working on the education. So during the past century, there has been a gradual movement towards a more inclusive understanding of citizenship, influenced by the development of civil, political, and social rights. Current perspective on national citizenship vary between countries, reflecting differences, political and historical count. So what they said, I will not go to uh, read uh, the, all the documents available. I'll just read here to understand what a global citizenship refers to a sense of belonging to a broader community and common humanity. It emphasizes the political, economic, social, and cultural interdependency and interconnectedness between the local and the national and the global. Now, how these are connected? One thing, these all are connected to technology. So the technology in global citizenship education is playing a core role and a very important role or very unique role in order to connect these communities together. Based on these technology, they set their benchmark and core values that how to promote education throughout the global. Second thing, the UNESCO, they have set the unanimously standards for every country and they have the same learning objective, same topic areas, same age areas, stage areas for all and every countries across the world. So this information you must know. Now we'll go back to the what areas and criteria they have defined for global citizenship education. Back to the PowerPoint. You can see here for global citizenship education entails three core conceptual dimensions. One, literature, review the literature. Second, framework, conceptual framework, approaches and curricula. So these three core conceptual is not uh, conceptual dimension is not for a particular country, but these are for every country. And these, all the countries and all they are working or on the particular platform. Suppose, you know, a country needs uh, ed for education or UNESCO has to develop this uh, school curriculum. So there will be same curriculum, literature will be same, the framework will be same, resources will be same throughout the globe. So these standards, that's why they call it global citizenship education. So there's no differentiation of you. They will analyze the need of the students according to you know, and they will provide these things. So as well as technical consultant, I have mentioned that the technology is playing very important and unique role in the global citizenship education. Move next step. GCD, Global Citizenship Education, is a UNESCO response to these challenges. It works by empowering learners to all ages to understand that these are global, not local issues. If it is a local issue, who has to deal? Country. And become active promoters of more peaceful, tolerant, inclusive, secure, and sustainable society. GCED is a strategic area of UNESCO as education sector program and builds on the work of peace and human rights education. It aims to instill in learners the value, attitudes and behaviors that support a responsible global citizenship, creativity, innovation and commitment to peace, human rights and sustainable development. This is the goal of that GCED global citizenship. Let's move to that. Now, what are these core conceptual dimensions based on. They are based on these three domains. Okay. Cognitive, socio-emotional, and behavioral. So cognitive means to acquire knowledge, understand the critical thinking. This is a brain-based, okay. So it's about the global, it's about the regional, it's about the national, and it's about the local issue. And the interconnectedness and interdependency of the different countries and the population. 
Second, social emotional, to have a sense of a belonging to a common humanity. It's a social, right? Sharing values and responsibility, empathy, solidarity, and respect for differences. So, as we know that we have the cultural diversity, how do we have a deal? We have to deal as a global citizens. We cannot say that we are uh, belongs to this, 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 this one. In this country, we have to respond. We have to share our culture. We are so you are as an international student, and you have to set. You have to follow the international benchmark. Behavioral to act effectively and responsibly at local, national, and global levels for a more peaceful and sustainable world. How you have to behave as in a global citizen. You have to be care for the society. You have to be care for international benchmark. You have to well, care for your local. You have care for international. You have for global issues as well as them. And how to deal, you have to deal according to their benchmark. So these are the three domains of the global citizenship for core conceptual dimensions. Second thing, aims of the global citizenship. What is the main purpose of that? What enables us to learn, to develop an understanding of the global governance structure, rights and responsibility, global issues, connection between global, national, and local system of process. Now, see, we cannot survive alone. We receive ads, we give ads, we support each other. And this interconnection, interdependence. So if we are isolated, that means we have to work hard. It's a difficult to survive. So interconnection, we all the nations are depending on each other. Some have a uh, shortage of the resources, the other has. To. That's why they have assigned the treaty and agreement how we have to deal with them. Recognize and uh, appreciate a difference in multiple identities, culture, language, religion, gender, and our common. Humanity and develop skills for living and increasing diverse world. We set the rules and regulations for each language, each religion in world. One is a common that every religion has a freedom. Develop and apply critical skills for civics literacy, for municipality, critical inquiry, information technology, media literacy, critical thinking, decision making, problem solving, negotiation, media literacy, critical thinking, decision making, problem solving, negotiation, peace building, and personal and social responsibility. Recognize and examine beliefs and values and how they influence political and social decisions making. Perception about social justice and civic engagement. Develop attitudes of care and empathy for others and the environment and respect of diversity. Develop values of fairness and social justice and skills to critically analyze inequality based on gender, socioeconomic status, culture, religion, age, and other issues. Participate in and contribute to contemporary global issues at local, national, and global levels are informed, engaged, responsible, and a responsive global citizen. So an examiner can ask you or give you that uh, this is one of the aim for the global citizenship. So you have to recognize that is it the global citizenship? How are you going to recognize if it is the uh, global citizenship? Definitely they will be giving you uh, the reference of the uh, international uh, issues or international education or international scenario. So you have to focus on the scenario that how and why this question is belong to the global citizenship education. So it will clearly reflect uh, through the given information and instruction. So you have to read the information carefully. Now, how to use pedagogical guidance at country level, global citizenship topics and learning objectives, TLOs, contextualizations of the TLOs at country level by national and local stakeholders. So uh, global citizenship education or UNESCO, they set their curricula based on, based on the need of the country. What is the language there? What are the standards? What is the community? And uh, what is the need of the students and how to satisfy? Based on that, 
they set these topics and learn out outcomes. Detail and con uh, concrete the context specific guidance develop and capacity issues address implementation and use of education production at various level national provincial and school so suppose if the topic is about the geography so they will be giving you for the certain uh, countries you know the geography nor another country's geography and that will be based on their uh, locality and their nation our key learning outcomes as i mentioned these are the key learning outcomes which belongs to the age domain for the cognitive learner acquire knowledge understand local and national global issues and interconnectedness and dependency of different countries and a population learners develop the skills for critical thinking analysis because this belongs to cognitive so examiner can ask you that which learning outcomes is related with the cognitive domain similarly social similarly uh, behavior so learner has experience a sense of belonging to common humanity, sharing values, responsibilities based on human rights. Then develop attitudes of empathy, solidarity, and respect for difference and diversity. Behavior learners act defectively and respective, responsibly at local, national, and global levels for a more peaceful and sustainable world. Learners develop motivation and willingness to take necessary action. So these are the learning outcomes based on the core consumptional uh, demands. Now, according to these demands, okay, these topics, you know, there are the nine topics, okay. Based on the learner's attributes, identify about the core demands of the learning, a key learner outcomes has a nine topic area. Number one, informed and critically literate. They have a three domains of uh, topics, local, national, and global system structure, issues, of connectivity and community of local and international underlying assumption of and power dynamics socially connected and respective of diversity different levels of identity different community people belong to how these are connected difference and respect for diversity ethically responsible and engaged action that can be taken individually and collectively ethically response behavior getting engaged and taking in now, based on these, you know, now we cannot say, as you know, that the curriculum we set according to the phase, you know, KG has a different curriculum, phase one from elementary or primary, middle and higher school, they have a different. And these different phases of the school have a different uh, ways of assessment and a different teaching style. Similarly, these topics have been assigned globally and uh, they have a nine criteria based on their three demands that how we have to teach and these topics further has been divided based on their uh, phases of the school we can say or ages of the students you can see here there are the five uh, four ages of this one from primary to lower primary which is the five to nine year you must know upper primary education nine to twelve lower secondary twelve to fifteen years or upper secondary 15, 80 years. So upper secondary high, lower is the middle. And uh, this one is the uh, elementary. And uh, this one is about, we can say that uh, uh, KG or what we call that age of the group. You know. So guys, these, you know, that the, this is the purpose of the global citizen education. And uh, I'm sure uh, it will help you. This information is uh, gonna help you. So in this lesson, I have shared about the professional and person, personal ethics. And this is about the standard one, uh, professional uh, knowledge of the professional ethics. So I'm sure you like it. Okay? If you want more videos like that, please don't forget to subscribe. If you want more videos like that, press the bell icon button. If you have any question, you can ask me. I'm going to drop the links in the description, my WhatsApp number, email, you can communicate if you have any question or you want any help from that. One more thing. As I told you, I'm not going to leave you alone. If you want to help others, please share the resources, whatever you have. My email is in the description. Thank you so much. We'll be meeting in the next lesson with a new topic and a new theme. Stay blessed and stay safe.